this episode... Bebez? Bonjour Paris! I am so happy to be waking up in Paris this morning in my beautiful hotel room. I am just staring out the window. It is a very rainy, gloomy day like I thought, so I haven't gone out to get coffee or pastries or anything, but that's okay because Jonathan is on the way and the coffee at the hotel is pretty good. So right now I'm just doing some editing on my computer right here. Now all I need is a croissant and another espresso. <laughs> uh oh. C'est qui? Bébez? <laughs> Ma carte doesn't work. <laughs> Ça va? Ça va ou quoi? <laughs> I had to turn on my camera so quickly. I've been Let's... waiting out the window. Oh! <laughs> I was literally on my computer and then I'd run over here every time I heard a suitcase or a car and anyway. Hold up. Like a little She's weird cat. Tick, tick. <laughs> and then I hear a knock and I'm like, oh man, I missed it. It's Jonathan. <sighs> oh. <laughs> I'm glad you're smiling. How about you drop the camera for a little second la, so you can tell me how was your day? So I asked the, the front desk if you had talked to them in French or in English. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I talked to the front desk in, in French. I just no, said I ordered food in French. <laughs> no, I, I walked in and she was like, bonjour, and I was like, hi. Oh, no. I get back and I, I call my mom downstairs, talk to her for a little bit, and this Uber guy com comes walking into the courtyard downstairs and he looks at me, he's like, blah, 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 and I'm like, eh. <laughs> But for some reason in my head, it sounded like such gibberish that my brain just like jumbled it all oh, up. No. And I was like, nah, so wait, nah. and he was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, walk, he walks in. <laughs> and then I forced myself to go outside and I was like, okay, whew, we're going to order a pastry. That's a good start. She asked me like, what do you want? Mm. I was like, um. En français? I was like, tac, tac, tac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, right. That's the most French thing. I was like, mm, uh. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Um. <laughs> She's like, oh my god, this chick is trying so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like so proud of myself. I was like, ee. Even though that's like the most basic thing you could do. Is yeah. it raining again? Oh, but it's raining and it's sunny. That's nice. Do you know how to say rainbow in French? Arc-en-ciel. Oh, it's nothing like I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to combine like rain and sun or something. The sky's arc. Arc-en-ciel. Uh, arc sky, arc in the sky. Arc-en-ciel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. C'est pas top top. <laughs> C'est pas top top. C'est pas top top. American in Paris, yo. <laughs> I truly look like an American in Paris. No, like turn, the, turn the turn the hat around. Turn the hat around. Sweatpants. Turn the hat around. There we go. We got a little bit of graders in Paris. Hey, a little graders hey, in Paris. Graders in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> we are looking for a phone shop. Yes. All right, I'm gonna stop you right there. This is too funny to not point out. So you see that store right behind Jonathan? See the sign in the window that says 5G? Yeah, that's because it's an SFR, which is a French phone store. Something like Orange, maybe. Yes, we are looking because for- Because we have no internet connection, meaning that we can't find our way to any of the spots that we're planning to go to. No, we can't find our way to an Orange, and we can't find our way back to the hotel, so. It's literally right there. Well, that's We're the deal. Completely well, relying on finding one of these stores to get a SIM card. I think we can just keep walking up to uh, Toulouse, and we'll find it. <laughs> Jonathan, <laughs> <laughs> I I want one of those. Wait, wait, you have to. Yeah, I want one of those. But like a mini. Why? I've never been at the top of the Eiffel Tower, and I think I'm excused because you haven't been to the. I haven't been to, to many the of the tourist attractions in. Um, New York and I've lived there for 10 years, so. Exactly. We didn't find an orange, we actually found a... Bouygues Telecom. Yes, and they have a... Which is kind of the same. Yeah, they, they have, have a great, great deal. deal. <laughs> you have 20 gigs for 30 days. Yeah, yeah super for easy. 40 Just, euro. It's like a tourist pass, you yeah. get it for a month. So I know a lot of people that are coming in from other countries, especially America like us. We have our CDC card, which is accepted here, but we need a health pass in order to get into museums, 
possibly trains. Anyway, we tried this place right here, which is in front of, uh, I think this is Town Hall or Hotel the Capitol. Hotel de la Ville. Yes, and um, they said no, try a pharmacy. Oh, pharmacy, you wanna go in there? Pharmacy it is. All right, so what did the lady say? Well, I asked her if she could take our CDC cards and she said no. <laughs> she said she's not in the systems. The, the pharmacy is not in the systems. And then I asked her, okay, can you point me a pharmacy that is in the systems that can help us out? No. <laughs> Very French. <laughs> she kept saying no to everything. Yeah. I was trying to be friendly. Yeah, so it was a failure. Je suis un échec. <laughs> <laughs> Je suis un échec. Je suis un échec. That means I'm a failure. Yeah. Just to clarify, we did end up being able to get into places with just our vaccination card. However, if you plan to take a plane or train, I would still get a test done in case they require a pass sanitaire. It'll cost 25 euros and you can just walk into any pharmacy during their testing hours. By where? We spotted Notre Dame and decided to head in that direction. Ooh, I love seeing trash on a boat coming down the Seine River. Romantic. <laughs> You look in your element. <laughs> you know what's funny? An American in Paris. No, wait, you're not supposed to talk if you're Charlie. Oh. <laughs> Grandma's your bag. It's vintage. Yeah. It's vintage when it has dust on it. Yeah? Yeah. Those will cost twice as much. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You should turn it around. Yeah. We didn't get very far before running into the nearest cafe to avoid the rain. It's sunny but raining. You have to tell your audience that here's the Eiffel Tower that they've been waiting for. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a beautiful Eiffel Tower. You see this thing with the dingling yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah. This was designed back in the 1500s, yeah. yeah. By Mr. Eiffel. Mr. The tower. Eiffel himself. The Mr. Eiffel, the tower. Yeah. Careful, some people are actually going to believe you. On April 15th, 2019, the world watched as the historic Notre Dame Cathedral was consumed by flames. Most of the roof was destroyed and the spire collapsed. The fire reached all the way up to the wooden framework inside the North Tower, which supports eight very large bells. It is believed that if the bells had fallen, they would have collapsed the towers and with them the entire cathedral. So here's the back of the church. You can see the, what are they called again? The, the towers. I'll, I'll insert what the it's called toothpicks. here. <laughs> <laughs> they look like toothpicks no, with gargoyles. Nice. Yeah, with the scaffolding especially. It's very, yeah. very nice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they really made an improvement. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> okay. Oh, hello there. You are currently watching Interesting Facts with Emily and Jonathan that we totally didn't Google 10 minutes ago. Fact number one. Fact number one. Notre Dame is the most visited tourist place in the Paris city boundaries. <laughs> well, maybe not right now. Did you know it was constructed between the 12th and the 14th century? It might be hard to believe, but this place, sacred place, was a place for beheading. Actually, not real beheading. It was only statues. Only statues were harmed. They were beheaded by revolutionaries thinking that it was the heads of kings. Actually, it really wasn't. At this point, they were ready to do anything to kill the monarchy. They were really, really fed up and really hungry. Have you seen Versailles? No wonder. If I had a house like that, I would be careful that my people wouldn't come and try to behead me. <laughs> I yeah. think you're 28. I think, I think, you're, that, I think, I think you're right. Was... Did you take the time to actually count them? And then you just acted like you knew? No, 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 no. I, I've researched this in 28. Uh, kings and for... What does that mean? Can you name them all? Uh, Van Damme. Van Damme? <laughs> what about Pierre? Fifth one Louis. Louis. Six one Vuitton. Vuitton. <laughs> Seven one Christian. <laughs> what about the <laughs> Also, Notre Dame is known as point zero on the map of Paris, so everything, every other location is measured from this point the distance. There's actually a flash in front of the church beyond these walls that we can't show you today. Well, that's pretty cool. We're standing in the middle of Paris right now, technically. And we'll just CGI a little cross right here. Point. 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 
Anyway, I think that's all the facts for today. Thanks for watching. J'adore Paris. Tu vois que French. Merci beaucoup. Enchanté. Doesn't it just look like a cute street to live on? I'm romanticizing Paris again. And if you look to my right over this way, it's a bunch of pigeons eating a baguette. Very French. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, your baguette is mine. See my baguette. <laughs> For dinner, we decided to try out this cozy restaurant called Robert A. Louise. It first opened in 1958 and is now run by Robert and Louise's daughter, Pascal, and her husband, Francois. We ordered the Côte de Boeuf and watched it being cooked on the open fireplace in the back. The vibe in the restaurant was like dinner at Grandma's cottage. Warm and inviting. So, tell me what we ordered. We, uh, we got the Rossisso and the Côte de Boeuf for two people. So what, what is this exactly? Oh, so this, this is traditional South, uh, South of France drink called Leica. We drink it a lot in Toulouse. What does it taste like? Uh, I don't know how to say uh, in in English, anise? An anise? Uh, like a licorice taste. Licorice, yeah, licorice. I'm gonna go with film. Is that okay with you? It's salted better than salt bay. Yeah, that's, that's not a talk down on the French cuisine, Salt Bay. Who's, who's that? Look at that. Perfect. <coughs> Nelly, guess who gets to do the honors? <laughs> I'm preparing my mouth. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it smells good to see you. It's delicious. Very, very tender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, you have to try some. Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very, very, very good. Mm -hmm. Best steak? I think I know why the owner is the one that cooks this. Is she the owner? She is. Oh, she's nice. The, she's the boss. I called her the artist. <laughs> I love a nice woman boss. Thumbs up. So we stopped at the Voltigeur, we couldn't resist, and it was this free table and it looked like destiny. The cool thing about this place is that there's no menu. You just tell the bartender what flavors you like and he makes a custom drink just for you. Mm. I know. That's my kind of drink. It's your kind of drink, huh? Mm, it tastes like a, like a sour lemon head. Mm, you like it? It's so good, I love it. So, so I don't know why I'm whispering. This route is really silent. <laughs> and I'm kind of documenting this because it doesn't feel like Paris right now. It's the capital of France and there's nobody here. We're in the center, the equivalent of Soho in New York. There's nobody. That concludes day one of Paris. We are we going to sleep. We are so exhausted. Naked so is the word. Bonne nuit et bisous. Bisous et à demain. À demain. Bye Ciao. Bye. Ciao. That was cute. That was weird. <laughs> In the next episode...